Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Thursday Devotion and also our prayer time together. Just to give all of you an update with what's going on with my wife, Cindy, we, um, this, this has been a, just really an, an, an incredible week. And I'm trying to tie this all together tonight with the power of prayer and how we can just come to God and ask God to help us through our weaknesses. And, and he does. And I want to share with you how Cindy and I have surrendered this to God, this whole process that we've been going through with her. And we've had, immediately, we've had immediate results in God's answering our prayers. <clears throat> Tuesday, this past Tuesday... Cindy had her procedure where she had a catheterization and um, it's also an angiogram where you go in through the groin and uh, they, they take and they look and see if there's blockages. If there is a blockage, they can do angioplasty and then open up the vein <clears throat> or the artery. Well, in Cindy's case, the artery was so blocked and so hard because Many of her arteries and veins have now what they call hardening, hardening of the arteries that the surgeon couldn't get through. So there was a block in her left leg, and it was behind the knee, and it's probably about three to four inches long. So after the procedure, the surgeon came out, talked to Cindy and myself, and explained that she would need bypass surgery. If you remember, when I, uh, from last night's devotion, that day on Tuesday, I wasn't allowed to be in the hospital with Cindy, but somehow I was able to have a conversation with the scheduling uh, nurse uh, on Monday, and I explained the events of what's going on, and again, God opened the door, and I was allowed in the waiting room, and I was also allowed to go back into the holding area with Cindy. So God opened those doors immediately, so there was an answer to our prayers. <clears throat> so... The artery was blocked, uh, Cindy would need bypass, and would have it, the surgeon said that the next day, which was Wednesday, she could, uh, she could actually do the bypass surgery. So a lot of this happening, we were, we were trying to process all this, Cindy was upset, you know, I was, I, I mean, I, I'm not saying I wasn't upset, but I was concerned as well. You know, here we go again, similar to what we went through last year. Last year we went with a different surgeon we went through the process of having the angiogram catheterization blocked, then, then to um, bypass surgery. And if you remember on February 1st last year, the bypass went through. Um, the next day it failed. February 2nd, we had a second bypass. And then sub, uh, subsequently, <clears throat> three weeks later, that, uh, that by, bypass failed, and then it led to an amputation. So well, this is all going through our minds, you know, what's going to happen. And, you know, I'm praying, I'm giving this all to God. And somehow, through the process, I, I, we had a conversation with the surgeon, you know, about, you know, she was going to har harvest other pieces of vein so that she could put the uh, section together so that Cindy would have a, 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 the bypass. And I, I happened to mention that I said, I understand that there are, uh, opportunities to use plastic veins and and she explained she said yes she uh, she said there's uh, there's benefits to plastic veins and there's there's uh, there's also not so good benefits to having a plastic uh, vein or artery so with that being said we prayed and 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 just put this all in God's hand and then yesterday I was at the hospital I guess at 8:30. they came and got Cindy at 9 30 and the procedure started, I think it was around 11.30. And when the whole thing was done, her surgeon, and I have to tell you, Dr. Detschelt was excellent. She came and sat with me in, in uh, Cindy's room. Cindy was still coming out of anesthetic. And she explained to me that she used the plastic veins or arteries. And with that being said, she said, everything looks good. Everything's opening up. And she has really nice blood flow to her foot. I was thinking about all this this past couple of uh, couple of days, and I was thinking I was thinking about how God just many times when we go to Him and we present our, our cares and our and our concerns, there's a there's immediate answers to our prayers, and sometimes the answer is no, 
and, uh, and other opportunity and other prayers that we have and other times it's wait and wait and see so I want to share with you a couple of scripture passages that I have found the uh, first one is is uh, from Romans chapter 8 and this is uh, 33 through 39 Romans chapter 8 33 through 39 and this is what we read and this is Paul talking to the church at Rome. Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised. Who is at the right hand of God. Now listen to this. Who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardships or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it's written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. Now listen to 37. Now in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. But I want you to think about where it says in verse uh, in verse 34, who indeed intercedes for us. In other words, what he's saying is Jesus, when he ascended back to the Father, sits at the right hand of the Father, his ministry is not over, but he intercedes for us and continues to pray for us. Now listen to uh, Hebrews chapter 7. And I'm going to read verses 24 and 25. And this is what the author of Hebrews says. But he holds his priesthood, and this is the, the priesthood of Melchizedek. He holds his priesthood permanently <clears throat> because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. In other words, the writer of uh, Hebrews is saying, Jesus continues to pray for us. Even though he's in heaven, his ministry continues. The other day, I was thinking as, as, as we were going through this whole process with, with Cindy that Jesus is already praying for us. Jesus is already praying for Cindy. Jesus is already praying for you and for me. And that, that gives me peace of mind. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for hearing our prayers, and Jesus, thank you for continuing to pray for each and every one of us, and that brings me comfort, and I know it brings uh, to all those who are listening today comfort. We continue to pray for our nation, we continue to pray for our world, and we pray for peace. And we pray for everyone out there listening this evening. Whatever they're going through, whatever struggles that he or she may be encountering, we ask and pray that you touch each and every family of our church and those who are listening who are not members of our church and to bless them and give them the grace that can only come from you. Some of our prayers will be answered instantly. Some of our prayers will be answered by saying no. And some, Jesus will simply say, you have to wait. And you have to have patience. We pray, Father, that as we continue to journey through life, that you give us the strength and you give us the courage to face each day unafraid. Will you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just one comment, Jane, uh, Jane Rivers had surgery today of a valve replacement I haven't heard. I'm going to be calling them in a little bit. So remember Jane in your prayers and also Cindy and also Penny. Uh, Penny will be having uh, surgery at the end of the month and also remember Dave. And, and Sunday you're going to hear a bunch of other uh, prayer requests that we have. So please pray for all of us and we pray for you as well. Amen.